So I note I happened to glance in the mirror and I saw that their skin was rippled on my breast and I knew that that was a sign that something was not right. And it only was that way if I lifted my arm above my head and I hadn't been doing regular checks and I hadn't noticed that before, but it just so happened that I caught it in the mirror and I called the doctor, I went in the next day. She immediately sent me for mammograms and ultrasounds. I had two biopsies that day, one biopsy the next day. The, that next day after I had the biopsy, I flew to New Orleans to run a marathon there. I flew back on Monday and I got the call on Wednesday that it was malignant. I actually walked an entire mile because I was thinking I wanted to push myself because I thought this could be it for me, this could be the last one. And I called my friend Jim and from the middle of the race and I said, what if this is it? You know, should I go for it even though it hurts because I had a time goal in mind, but my incisions from the biopsies were hurting. And he said, you know, nothing's guaranteed in life. This could always be your last one. And he said, if this is your last one, wouldn't you wish that you spent it having fun? So why don't you just have fun the rest of this race? So that's what I tried to do. The type of chemo that I'm having, dose dense AC, there's no chance of keeping your hair. And if I donated, if I cut my hair and then shaved my head, I could donate my hair. So that's what I wanted to do. So I'm donating my hair to Children with Hair Loss, which is an organization that will accept hair like mine that had been color treated. Uh, so I just figured since I'm gonna lose it anyway, somebody else might be able to use it. She's surrounded with friends who um, are, are there to celebrate the suck with her. Uh, that, that was the great thing about that night was there were so many people that were just so excited to, to see what, what sort of hairstyles can we make out of, out of her hair as we're taking it down. I have my friends from dodgeball, my friends from the run club, my friends from law school, and my friends from work, and I've sort of been pulling them all together because I need their help at this point in time. It was really hard when I went to my first set of doctor's appointments. All the medical providers kept asking me, first thing they asked was, are you married? And second thing was, Do, does your family live here? And that made me feel so alone because I'm not married and I don't have family here. And then I got home that night from that appointment and I had this huge gift from my friends. They had sent me all these uh, lush bath bombs and toiletries and everything because they wanted, they knew it was going to be stressful for me to go to those appointments and they wanted me to be able to relax when I got home. And that's when I realized that it doesn't matter that they're not related to me by blood, they're my family. It was very emotional. Like it was, I could tell that she was kind of holding it back. It was a shock. She's just this kind person who is always loving and welcoming and the thought was like, what, what the heck? Like, it, this isn't fair. She's one of our favorite people and she just has so much energy and, and vitality um, that it really elevates the rest of us. She's very funny. I think she's a remarkable person. She has a tremendous character, the depth of her character is, is unparalleled. I think that she's also the, a very gritty person. I think that she's, she's so resilient and she shows people how to be resilient. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna meet it head on and, and she hasn't hidden it. She hasn't used it as an excuse for anything like some people might do. She has been very much like, I'm gonna take this bull by the horns and just roll with it. Why do I run? I run because it quiets my mind primarily. Uh, I'm a very type A person, I'm a lawyer, I'm always thinking of this deadline or that deadline or this thing I need to do. 
And when I run, I don't think like that. My mind empties and I'm able to just be in the moment. And running is really the only aspect of my life that is like that for me. So I, I came into her world, in her dodgeball world, and I had, had not known anyone and I was a little intimidated and she was super accepting, super just like, hey, I'm Carrie Ann herself. And it was a whirlwind. Like all of a sudden after meeting this entire group of people and they're amazing, amazing people. And they just invited me in and then she would have me over to her house. And like, it was just, it was like a, I don't know, big hug. Like she's just so sweet and she kind of leads that and she's inviting and she's warm to everyone and encourages people and offers, offers feedback, you know? but in a kind way. Um, she's like a, I would, I would describe her kind of like how she plays dodgeball on the court. Like she's a sneak, she's like a sleeper cell. I don't know if it's made me more patient. Maybe it's working on making me more patient. It's made me more compassionate, I think. I think I was a compassionate person before, but I didn't really consider the fact that somebody who looks normal because I looked really normal until I shaved my head. Uh, somebody who looks normal could be dealing with something like this. I think the thing that I love about dodgeball uh, is that it attracts the oddballs, um, the unique and interesting people, uh, which, I mean, obviously Carrie Ann is a really great example. <sighs> She's fierce, uh, very independent, uh, that she's done so much with her life. Uh, yeah, she's, she's just, she's an exceptional person. You know, normal for me is running a lot, training for marathons, training for ultra marathons, and getting back to my normal social life where I can be more active and you know, do dodgeball and the things that I really enjoy without having this hanging over me. I think people stay positive because I, I've never been so confident that someone could overcome something. It's the, it's the resilience and the, the desire to live and the desire to perform is like what makes someone, you know, succeed and what makes someone heal. You know, she fell in love with running. And I think that like when you fall in love with something, like, she became an athlete at 30. And, I, and I've never seen really anything like that happen. I think that's just another example of how, she, how much she loves life. And she uses like her goal orientation to like demonstrate how much she loves it and like what she does. I knew when I was diagnosed that I would need something to look forward to as being after I'm done. So the treatment now feels like it's never going to be over. Five months of chemo and then radiation. But I can say by the time of the LA Marathon next year, I will be done with cancer treatment and I will be running a marathon.